know, just just uh, just the, the, I got I got I got a big point out of that, and what you're talking about, you know, setting your standards. Uh, I I associate a lot of stuff with sports as, as well, you know, and with coaching. I think, and you're talking about changing. I've actually uh, changed have to change my standards with coaching these girls in the seventh grade here in Indiana because Indiana is a basketball country, <laughs> and uh, I come in I come in expecting the girls to improve each game each each week or whatever, but be ready for the championship game by then. But I need to come up with a, a little strong attitude because these kids are playing like year round. Some of these girls play year round ball, you know. And and I need I need I need to take that as serious as I do with 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 them that uh, that they take it as serious. Uh, if these girls paying paying money to play ball all year round, that means they they serious. So and but I go on with the attitude of I don't I don't really worry about winning every game. I worry about improving each game, and then by the time we get to the tournament, we 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 try to win that one. Uh, each game to me is a learning experience. Uh, so I mean, and, but I've won two championships out of four years, so I must be doing something right. <laughs> a little. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I mean, uh, the standards is a is a big thing, man. That I just like what he said about you know, meet your standards, especially like with relationships. I mean, that's that's big for me. Uh, and I think I think everybody falls into this trap of when we initially like when I'm young, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, my standards aren't high. <laughs> You know, let's be honest. I mean, so I need to set my standards. My my standards are high now, higher than that than the, the third wife. But <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, this and, and a lot of stuff that he talks about is that like we already know. We are, we've heard a lot of stuff, but just hearing it in a different context sure. means a lot to me. You know, and hearing it from him saying the same things I've already known. But by hearing it re reinforce some things, I need to re 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 uh, re re uh, re engage in myself and or refocus on. So the standards, yeah. I mean, I like that chapter. But again, I had to read like two or three times to get the, on both chapters, <laughs> and I still ain't got everything now. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 what I got out of it, man. Love it, man. Nah, that's uh. It's beautiful. No, it's just, again, like you said, it's so deep that like you do have to really go back through several times. I mean, it's again, you could do it 50 more times and still, yeah, <laughs> it's going to spark something else, maybe not new, but something else is going right. to go. But then you listen to it or go back through the set of questions and all of it, like to get deep into it. And you're going to get a whole nother perspective next week because you raised your standards. In certain yeah. areas, you yeah. know, back to the standards too, like back to when you were in your 20s, or whatever, all of us, it wasn't just that your standards weren't that high for the other one, it was for yourself because it all starts with yourself, right? So your standards, like where you're like living a little bit crazy or off the edge or a little bit wild or a little bit, you know, whatever. And then, so you had to like lower your standards of, you know, your girlfriend or spouse or whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. has, husband at that time, because your standards were, you know, living up to what we should be in all areas of our life. Again, this isn't just the one, because we all have, whenever you think about it, it's like, this is how I think. At first you think about like the one thing, and then it's like, right. well, just that, it was all areas. <laughs> you lowered it all. And then some areas it was, you know, too high. So what you got, Dave? I was just going to first say, um, I agree. This one's, <clears throat> I also, you know, listened through it multiple times, <clears throat> both of those chapters. And I really all the chapters before too. Um, this is one of the very few books, like similar to Think and Grow Rich, where just like you guys are saying, you can listen to it over and over, read it over and over. And you're, you're getting another chunk of something that you need to hear, you know? Um, couple things. I mean, some of the things you guys were saying too about about the standards. Um, you know, needing to be being open to them being flexible. I think is really good for me. Um, I know in the, I was talking to you guys. I think on the last call about goals and 
Um, you know, sometimes I've been too rigid and, you know, you set some expectation or goal and if you don't hit it, you're, you know, you didn't, I didn't learn from it. I just kind of thought I failed, you know? So anyway, just the flexibility kind of comparison to the goals, um, stuck out with me. And then also what are you willing to tolerate? And I was right at the beginning, but, um, that one, is like very in the moment of my life right now, because there's several things I'm just like, have been driving me nuts over and over and over. And I've either been, you know, putting it off or like not getting it done when I know I need to get it done. And so Dom, you've heard me talk about this one for a long time, but my shop is not organized and it drives me nuts and I can't work in my shop. It's not organized. It's got so much shit in there. And anyway, so I finally like, after I read this chapter, I actually made a couple of my buddies that we, we do Marco Polo videos back together, uh, back and forth together. And, and, uh, so I was out in my shop, I was actually starting to clean it up and stuff. Cause the last couple of days I finally been like, you know, in my head, I'm like, I need to finally get this done. I, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. And so this just rang, rang in my head, you know, I'm, I, in, in the video, I just started off by like, guys, there's something I am no longer willing to tolerate and it's my shop. And so I was like taking them around my shop and showing them what I had to do to clean it up and stuff and asked them to, you know, said, you're going to be my accountability partners. And, you know, just to kind of get all the, all the ducks in a row to, to, uh, I mean, I know I'm going to get it done. I got, I wrote it down by the end of the year for sure, but um, I'm going to start focusing on it and putting some, you know, focused attention on it daily if not at least a few times a week whenever i can get out there so um yeah that one really jumped out to me today for this i love love it and you put action to it already so that's uh you know that's massive it's not just uh again i talk about like with people posting or just always talking about how many books they read this year like okay what have you done What have you taken from that book to actually propel your life in a whole nother direction? You you gain some knowledge. You gain knowledge for a split second unless you use it and it's gone. It's just that's thankfully that's how our brains are wired. Like or we wouldn't get anything done because we would just be information overload and we wouldn't even know where to find it in our brain. But if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's with all of this. Right. So it's really putting all of the stuff into action. Even if all of us just put three, four new things in action throughout this book or, you know, take three, four things from this book, which I know will take way more, will take three, four things each chapter. If you're really paying attention and go back through it after we do all of this. And I was speaking to myself too. It's, there's so much in here. Sometimes you get paralyzed with so much, <laughs> but no, just take that. You know, one thing I took from it was, um, you know, in what you said too, what's your tolerance? What's your tolerance with money? What's your tolerance with relationships? What's your tolerance with you know, spirituality? What's your tolerance with your health? Just start there. And again, speaking to myself and all of you, and I know we can all do it, raise your standards. <laughs> raise your standards. But when you raise your standards, you have to be specific and really set specific goals, not just say like, oh, I'm going to do like, okay, I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to have it done by the end of the year. Okay, cool. Now break it down. What are you going to get done each week? Which part, which section of the, of the year? <laughs> Cause that's four months. I know you, it ain't that big. Right. So it's like, you can, <laughs> but I'm just saying you can really break it down into simple steps. And when you do that and you follow those steps, this stuff gets done. And you're on to the next. You're like, man, my standards weren't high enough. And then, but it's it's really breaking it down into the simple steps is what you know gets it done. Um and they said, think about your mind as a blender. Once you're exposed to something new, your brain takes in all the information and thoughts and decides what to do with it. It's back to like saying the good thing you don't remember everything, <laughs> it's what you continually do or what you make like a purpose or a goal or set of standards and write it down and be specific and do it every day if it gets done. Um, 
standards are the specific standards stand standards of the specific set of actions that you must complete and be precise harmony will breed success so you want to get all this into harmony your thoughts and your actions all into one rather than your thoughts one thing and your actions another or your actions one thing and your thoughts another once they're in harmony you're in it's success it's just it's part of like what he said you have you wake up you have a set of a routine you go to the bathroom first you brush your teeth or you brush your teeth then you shower you shower then brush your teeth or you know what however you brush your teeth you do it the same exact way however you shower and wash your hair your body or condition whatever it is your routine how you towel yourself off it's crazy right you start thinking about all that it's like it really is. And then if you go the other way or do something opposite, it's like, it's nuts. Um, then nine ways to set your, your higher standards. Um, understand your why, be specific. Two, break down your higher standard in detail steps. Three, be honest with yourself. I think a lot of us aren't really honest and realistic, you know, with <laughs> with ourselves all the time. Be honest with yourself. Get help in areas where you're weak. I mean, we're not masters in everything, so seek out help. Use uh, technology to track and document your goals and standards. Pretty simple, but you know, do a video to yourself with once you write down your set of standards because you're and do it when you're in a peak state. That was powerful too. Um, six, give dedicated thought about your thought between your goals and your standards like don't just set it and like oh kind of whim on a whim do it when you're in your peak state and go back and read it to yourself you might add something right to it because it's you uh forget perfection like they've said like <laughs> it just some things you didn't you felt like you didn't do or you didn't do it on the right timeline or you know you said it and when i do the same thing like I set these things and then they're like, ah, uh, I didn't complete it. I didn't get it done. Okay, go move on from there. Look how far you've come. Now you're not starting from where you started from. You're starting from, you know, step two, three, four, five, or month two, three, four, five, or year two, three, four, five. <laughs> but we get so caught up and like, it's not done yet. So um, eight, don't overthink it. We all get caught up with that. <laughs> overthink everything. It's like, well, what if I, no just start just if it's been on your mind or your thought to do it for this long whatever that is just go do it and you'll get figured out um and then the ninth one set standards uh to please yourself you must first you must please yourself first that's huge too because i think we always think about other people of like how they say we don't care what people think but we do i mean we we care that we say something to someone that we you know love or trust or care about, and then they say something that you don't really like. No, it's up to you first to make sure it fits within your box, your your life, to grow you, to progress you, to advance you in all ways. And if it doesn't feel right with whoever you're telling, you know, just cool, just say thank you and just move on and do it your way to a degree if you're doing it your way and it ain't working and someone's telling you a way that is working and they're working for them you might want to try that <laughs> not try that do that and not judge yourself and not try to perfect it not try to like just you know overthink it just do it their way if they're skilled and they know what they're doing but i think a lot of times we talk to people that have no clue and then we take their advice, like, yeah, you're right. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And you're asking them about investing, they don't invest. You're asking them about buying a house, they've never bought a house. You're asking them about, you know, marketing, and they don't market. You're asking them about, you know, health, health and wellness, and they work out a day in their life, and you tell them what you're going to do. Now, that's a bad idea. That never works. Like, don't, don't fall for that stuff. So, back, and the last thing was, the only person you should compare yourself to is you. That's it. Because only you know you, and only you know all that you that you know and you've done, and all the time and energy that you put into mastering 
whatever it is that you love. Wendy, what do you got for us? I know you got something. <laughs> you know, I do. You know, when it comes to standards, all I can think about is expectations. We have these expectations in our rela relationships, our, our children, children's teachers, our employees, everybody in our life. I mean, we go to get our car washed and we have a certain level of expectation and standard for what we expect to have done, but we never look in the mirror. We never look at our own lives and see, are we living up to the expectations of others, let alone ourselves? Because if we, it's almost like, I encourage everybody to have an imaginary friend <laughs> to tell you how you look when you are living your life the perception is of others as well as just the reality of how much time we're wasting and how many times we're not doing something that we ultimately want to rekindling it relationships, keeping them stronger, working on to-do lists and our goals. But yet we don't see it because we don't see our actions. We're doing them or not doing them. And so if I think about different aspects of my life, then it's like, okay, well, if I had an employee working on, you know, the front office, what is it that they haven't gotten done? And then I'll look and be like, damn, I haven't swept and mopped that front front floor for quite some time, but I wouldn't have seen that because I'm here every dang day and it doesn't cross my mind, but I didn't look at it as the perspective of an, another employee or a customer. And when I start thinking about my own life and my goals and my dreams, it's like, if I look at my standards, I feel defeated. But by reaching out and talking to other people, then people like yourself, you help me compartmentalize to where it's not like, okay, Wendy, tomorrow morning, I want you to just fix your shit. <laughs> it's like, okay, so what's your first action? What are we going to work on first? You know, and trying to just kind of keep things at a level that is obtainable. And that's, I think, um, it's actually last chapter where they were talking about, you know, setting whatever standards, goals, this, and that. Don't break it down. Don't try, don't get so specific and break it down into all these different crazy categories. Work on what's most pressing and what's most present in your life what you need to get done the most and that's kind of how i've always approached my life but not that it's the same it's the best way but i believe it's the most effective way because i get shit done and i just only reason i say that so confidently is because i have a list of things going into the next day in my head i should write it all down i know this that's what i'm working on there's a lot of things that i still need to, to master but and that's one of them, but I get that shit done. And it's always the most pressing, but it's progressing. It's, there's always motion. There's never parallelization. Like, oh my God, there's so much. If I looked at the list of all the stuff that was on the list, I get, I would go nuts. But I know it's going to pro propel me and progress me, and progress my family in the next day or the or during the week. Sometimes during the week, it takes two, three, four days. But if I know tomorrow, I need to call, you know, this person, that person, that person. I need to send out these these emails. I need to, you know, go collect. I need to go do whatever outside of my other normal everyday life of you know my family and my and my clients and what's in my schedule already. These are stuff outside of the schedule, but it's just getting it done. And it goes back to um, the other chapter where he's talking about a 24-hour day. I thought thought about this today, right? Where 24-hour day is, is, that's some old stuff. Like this book, 1937. These are, these are, you know, principles that were written then. Not that the principles have changed, but how you approach these principles have changed because we have access to everything at our fingertips at every single moment. So to have three eight-hour days in one day, 
It's brilliant. And or six hours, sorry. Twelve or six to twelve, twelve to six, six to midnight, three days in one day. And I had that thought today. I'm like, tomorrow's September first. There's four months left of the year. If you approach it as right, four months times three is twelve months. Then we still have a whole year left to be productive, to be, you know, one more thinkers and one more doers and one more everything that we're put our time and energy into the book and then into thinking about rich the book before that. So essentially now we know the secret to how to get three days out of one by breaking it down into those three categories to have a full year to get done whatever the hell you want. We don't, that's on us. We have the tools. We have all of the things that we need to work on. We have the set of standards. We have you know, how to set goals, how to do everything, how to, you know, again, just really propel ourselves this much every single day. Mm -hmm. And with three days in every day, you're doing this much. And where everyone else is like, man, the year's almost over. Oh my God, we're gonna it's can you believe it's September, you know, already it's this, it's that. Yeah, <laughs> because it was, it was the same thing when we were talking about, oh my God, it's 2020. Can you believe it? You know, it just, it just keeps happening in time. You know, will really get away from you if you let it. But if you, if you practice all the stuff that we've been learning in these, in these previous chapters and put it to work a little bit at a time, it just all, you know, it's like compound effect. It will add up with time. And then next thing you know, you've been doing this stuff for two years and three years and five years. So our guy Bob Proctor to the day he died at 80, what, six or seven, <laughs> 60 some years, like just living that. Yeah, you just got me, just got me thinking about one thing. It's like, <clears throat> I know I'm like, got me thinking about all these seeds like I've been planting, you know, it's like, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it's like, I know they're going to start catching momentum and just like take fire before too long. And, uh, I'm like, I feel like I have so many out there. I don't even remember some of the damn seeds I've planted, you know, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, that's great. That feels good. But then I'm like, Oh, I need to get a control out of everything, you know, get control over everything that I have been planting. So I'm paying attention to it, you know? So I don't know. I just thought about that the yeah. other day. And, and it's that's an amazing thing to have because now it's become part of you. So once it becomes part of you, it becomes second nature. It becomes the brushing the teeth, the washing your hair, or or your body first, and then you know whatever you're doing of your routine becomes part of your routine. Just to and they said it in one of these chapters, or they said it in one of the videos I was you know listening to earlier um, of Bob Proctor or whatever the motivational or inspirational or whatever I was listening to. But when you get to that point where you truly understand something, then you can start sharing. It. So, and I think we all have that where it's like, at first, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Let me, we can call it test it out first and call it whatever. But now you start making it part of your life and it becomes the habitual habit of whatever it is. And it just rolls off your tongue, man. Then you're then you're on stuff, but that's where you're getting. But now we've talked about this before with all of it and everything in life, the fortune is in the follow. Create a system, create a new set of standards of your follow-up standards, call it follow-up standards, <laughs> and this is what I'm gonna do. And whether it's, you know, again, my my system is not for everybody, and it's not, <laughs> it's probably not the best system, but I have a crazy recall of who I need to reach back out to and connect with and do whatever, follow up with. Cause that's been my whole life with uh, personal training and all the stuff that I do, coaching. I know where my money is <laughs> or where, and then I look at, I don't want to look at it like that, but I do is like each of these connections and follow ups are getting me closer to, to that money. If that 
if that makes sense. And and it's in the money, some of that money just means a relationship. Like I'm I'm further bonding that relationship with whoever that is. And that's relationship currency. So and it's not just money, it's just currency of how you deepen that that connection that you have with that person. And that's just by following. Them. That's communication. I can say, even if say, hey, what's up? How you been? Even they connected, you know, two months back with them about you know, a business or an opportunity that you have for them to look at. It's just the connection and the follow. Wendy, you had something. Oh, I was just saying, because you were talking about like, if you like slowly start a habit, how it like compiles and comp like compounds. Mm -hmm. Alexis, snooze for an hour. I'm about okay. ready to pull out the BB gun. Because <laughs> I still need that thing. Okay. Um, but it's like everything that we do in our life as we're making all these, like these changes, everything compounds to make it easier in our future or worse in our future. Right. You know, having a bad habit, putting things off, you know, it's amazing how so many things in my life have compounded in a negative way. Just, I mean, a couple of decades worth of clinical depression. And then it's like the, the little things that I used to love no longer exist. And it doesn't even cross my mind. You know, I remember when my depression was at the worst, it's like literally walking to the other side of the house felt like a two mile walk. But yet when I was in a good zone and I'm happy and everything's going wonderful, it's like, shh, keep up. <laughs> everything's amazing. So it's like all that, that mental state of mind. But, you know, so many times we expect too much of ourselves or we throw these new standards in our face, almost like a freaking statue. Like here, catch it. Oh, did it bruise you? you know, get back up. <laughs> Come on, bitch, get up, <laughs> you know? And, and it's like, when you look around, if you don't have those people to help you up, it's too easy just to be like, nah, I'm just going to sit here and heal a little bit longer. Yeah. It's, uh, it's real. I mean, again, if you don't stay on the court and keep continue with that every single day mentality of progressing again, this much, <laughs> Exactly. Because we all expect to, you know, expect and think we should be this far along and, you know, we're only here, but we don't understand, like, once you break through that one thing, boom, you just exponentially get, okay, now I got it. This is part of me. <laughs> this is my new habits. This is my new me. And that really takes, I don't care what we're talking about, that really takes, forget 18 days, 21 days, for 30 days for a real habit. No, it takes a lot longer for most habits to be, you know, ingrained and concrete into your habitual habit. Give it a year. Who cares? God willing, we're all going to be here a year, right? Give it a year. Tell yourself, I'm going to do this for a year. Commit to it. And then at the year, you can really, you know, but break it down into smaller goals and smaller good again, set of standards where they talk about, you know, don't set some of the stuff so far you can't reach it. Like set some parameters and some goals and standards that you can set the goal and the standards that you set with that goal are attainable. Then you can chunk that off and you can say, you know what, I won, I won, you know, okay. Say you're going to lose, you know, one to two pounds a week. So four to eight pounds in a month, if you're looking to lose weight, that's attainable. You say, I'm, I'm going to lose 20 pounds a week. Ain't attainable. You might do it one week, but it's not a, It's not going to set yourself up for the next win. And it's all about setting yourself up for the next win. And I learned that long ago, you know, uh, one of the fitness gurus that I followed back in the day, his, he coined the whole thing called win the day. Win the day. You win the day every day. Guess what? You can have a fucking amazing life. And that's really how I was already on that path of like, I guess a goal. That was a goal every day. Like whatever. I, it, that shit was earlier. I don't care. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna end the day with feeling good. And 
But when he coined the term win the day, that just made so much sense. Like, if you just keep winning the day, and it's not hard to win the day. Like, you could have the worst fucking day ever, but the last 30 minutes of the day, you do whatever makes you feel great, whether it's you know, go for a nice walk outside, do a grat- gratitude journal, meditate, pray for you know, five, 10 minutes, um, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and then go to bed. You won because you went to bed in a different state. You got that. I was just gonna say this morning. I almost talked myself out of one of my habits. I haven't been last couple of days. I've been a little under the weather, <clears throat> which is like very abnormal for me. Um, I was talking to my. This is a side sidebar. I was talking to my girlfriend, and she, she she's sick too. And uh, she's like, "This is weird. You never get sick." I'm like, "Yeah, that's because I don't expect to get sick, <laughs> and and I take care of myself." you know, which is, which is true. And, uh, um, so anyway, uh, I was, you know, so this is like day two and I'm already like over this little cold, but, um, this morning, you know, I woke up and I was talking myself out of going for my run. Uh, I was like, man, you're sick. You know, you should probably just rest, you know, in my head. And I'm like, I actually thought about texting or, or leaving you a message down and be like, so is it better to rest if you're not feeling, you know, if you're a little sick or is it better to like go ahead and work out through it? And I was like, if you're even considering like the question, then stop being a pussy and go for a run. You know? <laughs> so I, I was able to like, you know, talk myself into it. And I felt great afterwards. So I'm glad I did. But nice. anyway, I won that one, but you know, sometimes it's crazy how, how your mind can like trick you into thinking, you know, but, you don't need to it, do that habit. Again, with that, so, you know, I always tell people, always listen to your body. If you're questioning it and you're, if it's even a question you can do it, do it. <laughs> if you're like, you know what? I'm stuffed up. I'm feeling terrible. My energy's low. I don't feel good. I should probably rest. That doesn't mean you lost because then you can go again back into, okay, I'm going to do five minutes of, of gratitude journaling. I can do five minutes of breathing exercises. I can do five minutes of prayer, meditation, whatever. And that just, that just, okay, you won. <laughs> and so there's ways to always win, I'm telling you. And it's just, it becomes a muscle as you, you've heard many a times, it's a muscle. <laughs> and it's the habit that becomes second nature uh, you don't even think about like how to get into that state again or how to win the day. You just, okay, I didn't do that. I'm going to do this. Even if you did 10, 50, you know, 50 pushups, like, holy cow. Like instead of going for the run, I did 50 pushups. I journaled, I meditated. You might have, okay, you really won <laughs> by staying home, you know, but it's, uh, again, there's no, there's no perfect way. There's no one way. There's no, I just, it's all about propelling yourself to that next, you know, to that next day to God willing, you know, because it's, it's not a, it's not a guarantee. So you got to make sure what you're doing too, that you're living with joy and love and it's feeling good. So, right, See, and that's why I like that, like whole night, five non-negotiables that I'm doing mm-hmm. is because I mean, some people are taking it to the extreme, like by the end of the year, this is going to happen. But to me, shit, I just want to know, okay, am I, I want to go home before dark. There's, we go non-negotiable. I'm going home. Doesn't matter what, if I have to take work with me, whatever I'm up, I'm out, I'm going home. You know, I need to need to, but I haven't said it yet. The non-negotiable of falling asleep no later than a certain time or at least laying down tv off melatonin in my gut at a certain time Mm -hmm. melatonin doesn't work if anybody has any suggestions besides like turkey melatonin i don't drink alcohol you know damn it i don't drink alcohol no (laughs) (laughs) you know but um you know it's like what are some little things like this morning my kid decided i'm not going to school today And I could have stayed in bed. I could have stayed home and just left the house like five minutes before 10. But instead I was up at 7 a.m. And I knew how good it felt to stay up and be productive before I even opened for the customers. Hmm. And I knew how bad I would feel if I just went back to bed. 
you know, but for years, that's all I did was just go back to bed, you know, and just crawl out of bed, like right before I had to be somewhere. Cause my office is less than a mile down the road, you know? <laughs> so it's like, woohoo, but just setting those five negotiables for myself, you know, it's like, what am I going to do today? What I'm going to have done by the end of the week, you know, and having the realistic expectations based on past performance mm-hmm. on myself. And then, you know, just sharing with other people, Hey, this is what I'm going to knock out. This is what I'm doing, you know, and, you know, just kind of join forces in encouragement and that's all you can really do. Absolutely. And like you said, you, you created a way to win before you didn't win, you know, force yourself to do something, found a better way. So a Wendy way, a Wendy way. <laughs> A Wendy way. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I thought you mentioned about chapter 11. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go to chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11, one more impossibility thinkers and impossibility achievers. Yeah. Uh, what you got on that? I got, I mean, a couple things that one, one thing that really caught my ear was about the baby being able to walk, Right. you know, uh, how many times they try it, you know, that and th- it's impossible. It's, a, it's an impossible dream to them to be able to walk, you know, to get up and stand up and walk. And and and, 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 and like you said, trying over a thousand times eventually to get it right, you know. And then that's, I mean, that's a big dream. That, that, that was pretty big to me. And, and one of the quotes, he, I he mentioned several quotes. I think the one about, uh, uh, I think Mark Twain said it, like, uh, something about you said actions speak louder than words, words but not, but not often. nearly as often yeah not nearly, not nearly as often so yeah and I thought that was very very true to to that point you know so uh, another another chapter I need to read over again to be honest with you uh, but those little takeaways that, that, that I got from it but like I said the baby just, just imagine the baby imagine her dreaming him or her dreaming about walking, you know, and you know they say girls walk earlier, which mine did about ten months. Up. So, so, and uh, it, it's just amazing to watch them them grow up and 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 think about stuff like that. You know, we see it every day, but I never I never thought about it. I never thought I've never thought about it in that terms. So you know, now, I, think, I think one of the uh, one of the things that stuck out within that was like when he said that. It's not only do they dream it, they see it. They're watching everyone else do it. And right, they yeah. Do it. Yeah. And they try and try and try. And like you said, dream about it in, in, in like I can do it in belief. You know, it comes back into almost all of the things that we learn here within life. It's like, okay, you see it, you can dream it, you can manifest, you know, they're manifesting themselves doing it, even yeah. though they can't even come close in the beginning. <laughs> and, I th- and I thought about what he said about parents rejoicing when they do it. When my little girl started walking, I, I cracked up laughing, man. <laughs> the yeah. <biggest> smile. <laughs> I thought that was so funny, man. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was listening to another, like, Jim Rohn clip today, and he was talking about, you know, the one where he's like, he's like, and I asked a mother, like, how long until you're going to give up with about your baby not being able to walk, you know? It's like, no, nah, you're going to the baby's going to go until it can walk. You know, it's going to keep trying and trying and trying and trying. There is no right. question about it. You know? Right. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Anything That's else? All I got. That's all I got for now, brother. Awesome. awesome. Appreciate you. Dave? Yeah, just real quick, but the biggest thing that stuck out with me, and this is like, it's just something that really speaks to me, and I've been trying to really embraced the last few years um, and worked towards it. But anyway, this when he was talking about, I think there might have been a headline, the impossibility thinker and possibility achiever. Um, it was like opening that that part of it, um, talking about the Greek philosopher Epictetus and his uh, basically his encouragement of people to not worry about anything outside of your control. The only things you can command are your thoughts and actions. 
we choose our response. Stop aspiring to be anything but your best self because that does fall within your control. Like that just like wraps up my philosophy, man. It's like, you know, if they, I feel like if I can just stick to that, um, I don't know, everything else kind of falls into place, you know, for me. No, well, no, I mean, it's real. That's the thing. It's like, kind of like, I think a lot of times we read these things or we hear, we hear these quotes um, and we kind of, again, we poo poo them. We're like, yeah, whatever. No, <laughs> like these are like universal laws or rules. They're, they're the only way to get to whatever that is on the other side. And until we really embrace it, live it, eat it, digest it, know it can recite it back <laughs> frontwards backwards like you can everything about your daughter everything about you know about your you know yourself everything about whatever it is that you absolutely love real estate woodworking like just till you make that mantra or that quote or that way of life part of you and really, again, live in it for however long it takes to become you, whether it's 30 days, 69, I'd say one year. <laughs> Read that quote over and over and over again. Write it down next to all your other quotes or make it bigger. You know, put it on your phone screen until, again, you know it. And it's that, it's that simple. It really is. Everyone tries to overthink things, <laughs> overanalyze them. <laughs> perfect them whoa i don't know no, i'm talking this, about me <laughs> <laughs> this stuff works man and it's really again keep it simple man. Just keep it simple but keep it frequent and consistent every single day just as much as you can possibly do whatever that is to make it part of you i love you man. it's uh I wrote, so it's funny, everyone had a different quote. I did write down the Mark Twain one. That one I, I love too, but mine was the Muhammad Gandhi. Your belief, and again, I'm going to put it on my post. I was going to do it earlier, but I'll do it tonight or tomorrow. And it's really living within these words, and it, it just is. <laughs> and when you do it, it becomes part of you. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words becomes your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. And it sounds all like, Ooh, that sounds cool and great and amazing. No, it is. It, that's what it is. That's how you do it. It all starts with thought, though, and then it ends with destiny. <laughs> but you have to make sure you're putting in the actions <laughs> and create the actions and the habits which, by the way, the four of us, the next book will be Atomic Habits. So I've decided that from Mahatma Gandhi right in here in this quote that uh, Atomic Habits is because it all comes back to habits and which standards we know are set, which is in this, you know, the last chapter, like it all just ties in, man. This isn't, none of this stuff is rocket science. It's just simple. Break it down to the simplest form. How do you do it? Again, back to progress this much every single day. Um, I also wrote down um, a couple other things. You must put actions, actions to your thoughts. We know this. And then I love how he talks about, you know, it's think and do rich. You know, you can't just think and be rich. You can't just think and grow rich <laughs> you have to the do part you know and i and i love that he says you know he doesn't emphasize that enough within the book you know this is the you know this is the home run right here it's the doing it's the doing think do and grow rich um your dreams equal your riches you got a dream if you don't dream, you're going to just end up staying where you're at. You can do all you want. You can just keep doing the same thing. But it's the dreaming part 
you know, that really grows the riches. Um, your thoughts and actions have to be congruent, you know, once they become congruent, not just separate from each other, but they're married to each other, thoughts and actions, whatever you think, you put it to action. And it's a set of leveling up, you know, because in the beginning, when we all started our journeys in life or on this whole personal development, or really educating ourselves and advancing ourselves, there's a, there's a weeding out of like information of what should come first. We've all been on the court long enough to know what needs to come first. That's dream. <laughs> then put action behind the dream. And then it's, it's, you know, look back at what it is that you've been doing, adjust it, measure it. Because again, somewhere in here it says you know, your, you know, your actions are measurable. So if you're not measuring your actions or even measuring or you know, writing down or, or looking back at what you've been doing to see what's working, what's not working, it's like going to the gym and not having any sort, you know, you can grab two pounds or eight pounds or 20 pounds and do six reps or 50 reps. Like, no, wait, <laughs> grab the whatever pounds, 20 pounds, 10 pounds and, and do as many as you can. And then the next time try to do as many as you can plus one rather than just, again, be all over the board. So it's, uh, you can get oh, there. You can't control your thoughts, but you can control what you do is another massive thing. So when something happens to you, it's how you respond to it. It's like you can control that, but you can't control, you know, what you're thinking about. Like, like man, I want to do this, but no, <laughs> I shouldn't. I'm going to do that. And the faster that you can equate that and do that, life is going to be a lot simpler. I just want to add one more thing. Absolutely. When he's talking about, uh, you know, lifting weights and everything, Muhammad Ali used to always say that he wouldn't start counting his sit-ups until they start hurting. That's right. You know, so I just thought that brought, brought it back to my mind real quick, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's what, yeah. That's that what was, I was part of. That was part yeah. because they said, you know, how many sit-ups a day do you do? Yeah. That's what, and then he said, I don't know. I only start counting when they hurt. Until they hurt. <laughs> and, and that's where... That's really where the uh, you know the change in 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 the in the rewiring <laughs> starts. Yeah. It's not when it's comfortable. It's not during the warm up. It's not during the you know one minute of prayer, two minutes of prayer. It's yeah. It it's. It's so simple. <laughs> Again, all this stuff is so simple and we complicate it all. We confuse ourselves, we put ourselves back into parallelization rather than action. And if you don't stay in action mode, you're just going to be, you know, you're just going to be in that quicksand forever. So Dave's in the office now, serious. Sorry, I'm actually in the same spot, but now I'm on my phone because my uh, computer internet drops, so and uh, my computer blurs the background, but uh, this is my office, though. <laughs> I like the office, man. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> but I actually did like the way that uh, he talked about the the growth and the Think Rich book about you know it, it just it needs to go a little bit farther than 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 it has now, and I like the way that he he put that into to to effect you know add a little something to it so and that and that's what i'm getting out of this book as well that he's 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 another thing it's another think and grow rich book but just more to it mm -hmm. you know and like you said do part. It, yeah part two yeah the yeah do, so. do do yeah do the do part yeah but part yeah. two yes yeah for sure for sure yeah and i like what he you know where he kind of equates and talks about how when this was written in 1937 mm -hmm. you know, a lot was different, you know. We we're heading into World War II. We we're heading into, you know, times of crisis. We we're heading into, you know, a different type of, uh, you know, life that is unknown. 
again, but, so we can go back into we're kind of in the unknown right now. We're kind of in, the, but with the tech technology for portion, with how instantaneous we can get information, how instantaneous we can connect to people, right, and get answers back. It's like you know, the three three days in one concept just completely makes sense. And I never like I say I I kind of lived my life like this. But never broke it down into three days like that. I still, I'm still having a hard time comprehending and wrapping my brain around <laughs> that concept as far as like how to like schedule it in. Because again, right. I have my own ways of I've always done it, but I wouldn't recommend how I live my life and my in my systems in my head and how because <laughs> it's not duplicatable. But to break it down into six a.m. till noon, noon to six p.m., six p.m. to midnight is very you know, easy to grasp and duplicatable with people, especially people that have set kind of lives or set kind of hours or whatever. Yeah. My, my life has always been the training has been, you know, five, six a.m. to again, maxing out the day. I don't waste time. That was the other thing. Oh man, I think I'm going to share something real quick. Want to do this because it was powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Share I don't know if you can hear the audio. Can you see this? You tell me if you see the audio. Yeah. Let me see if you can hear the audio. This is powerful, it's just a few minutes. Can you hear it? So, you know, they're always like yeah. cracking the whip and then procrastinating and cracking the whip and then procrastinating. It's like, God, it's so boring and such a pathetic way of spending your time. And you know what that's like, because you probably waste like six hours a day. And I think we did an economic calculation about that a while back, right? Your time's probably worth 50 bucks an hour something like that. I mean, you're not getting paid that now, but you're young. And so this is investment time. And what you do now is going to multiply its effects in the future. So so let's say it's 50 bucks an hour, which is perfectly reasonable. So if you waste six hours a day, and you are, then you're wasting about $2,000 a week or about $100,000 a year. So like, go ahead, but that's what it's costing you every hour. And you need to know what your damn time is worth. So let's say it's not 50 bucks, it's 30 whatever, maybe it's a hundred, it's somewhere in that range. One of the things you should be asking yourself is when you spend an hour was that, well, what if I paid someone 50 bucks to have had that hour? And if the answer is no, it's like, well, maybe you should do something else with your time. And it depends on whether or not you think that your time's worthwhile. But the funny thing about not assuming that is if you assume your time isn't worthwhile, what happens is you don't just sit around sort of randomly in a state of responsibility list bliss, what you do is you suffer existentially. So that seems like a stupid solution. Well, I was wondering what the next step in life is. And I say, life's a little bit like a maze, you know? Until you walk down one hallway and try to open the door, you don't know if it's a dead end or not. And people are trying to sit back, and that's where the procrastination comes in, and look real far down the hallway and I'm like just walk if your actions are not in line with your beliefs stop lying to yourself there is nobody in this world that can go out there and be great for you you got to make a conscious decision to stop making excuses strap up your heart stick out your chest and get it done there's nobody in this world that's going to give you what you want. You're gonna have to go out there and get what you want by working hard. Being talented is not good enough. You gotta work hard, you gotta be passionate, and you gotta, gotta be great. I'll stop there. I just, I'll share that in there, but that just had, that was powerful. I don't know, <laughs> talking about just wasting time or is your time, is it worth it to you? Like this right here, it doesn't matter, you know, what I get paid per hour. This is worth it to me. When I'm reading a book, when I'm listening to the audios, when I'm going on my 
walks at the beach and I'm doing my clearing and I'm doing my energy work or, you know, on myself or if I'm stretching or if I'm working out or if I'm on a call with someone who's bringing me to another, you know, another level is adding to my battery versus pulling out of my battery. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff that really, you know, just makes it all worth it. So when you're wasting time with certain people <laughs> or you're wasting time on things mm -hmm. that aren't worth your value, and that's the value of it, whether it's $30 or $100 or $200 or $20, whatever it is, add it up, add it up over a week, over a month or a year. If you're watching, you know, all these different Netflix shows and this and that, and you waste time. It's like, you know, when I hear people talk about that, oh, you watch this series or that series, that series, add it up. <laughs> What's that costing you? That's costing you, <laughs> what do you say? The, the one calculation you did, what, just at $30 an hour, it was $2,000 a week, was $100,000 a year. Powerful, so, but, Anyway, I got to get rolling. I got to get on another call here in a second. Uh, anybody have any closing questions or comments or remarks? Or... D? No, I'm good. Uh, Dom, when, would, when did you want to connect tonight? I think we've got like an hour and a half. Right now, right after this. Right now, okay. Right. That works. Right now. Do you want to just stay on the Zoom and just stop recording or? Yeah, perfect. Is that easier? Okay. Yeah. Good night, Wendy. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you Good night. So much. I needed uh, it. Enjoyed it. Awesome. All right, guys.